Steve. This is Bob. This is Jay. We are Alpha Quadrant 6, a science fiction review show. On this episode, we are going to answer a burning question. How does the multiverse work in the Rick and Morty universe? So, Rick and Morty, you probably, you guys have all seen it. Oh, One, yeah. <laughs> wonderful show, I love it. It's actually very, very intelligently written, very entertaining. Um, we're just going to focus on just that one question. The, the, the show was premised on this notion that there's an infinite number of iterations of our universe, mm -hmm. right? Right. And that's sort of, a, a lot of the episodes are built around that idea. But there's, there's a couple ways to look at it. I mean, is it a, like, a, like an Everett many worlds type of thing where, where any time an event happens, like a quantum event, it splits off so that all mm -hmm. possibilities happen? Or is it more like bubble universes where we have our universe, but also in the multiverse, there's other bubble universes that ha could have different laws of physics. Uh, it could be very close to us, like a lot of the uh, the Rick universes. So, so they kind of, you know, it could be either one really, but I think it, it might be closer to the whole quantum idea of many worlds where where you have universes that, that can be very almost identical, but with subtle changes. Yeah, Rick said I that it's, there's just an infinite number of universes. So, I mean, they don't really explore the metaphysics of why there's an infinite number of universes. They don't talk about anything like quantum or bubble universes or whatever, even though you know, Rick does throw out a lot of scientific yeah. jargon. So there are a few things that are canon. You know, one is that there's an infinite number of universes. Yep. You know, Rick implies that there isn't an infinite number of universes with Rick and Morty, though. Right. Right. There's a finite number of universes, like for example, in the Cronenberg episode, the Rick Potion yeah, number yeah. nine. He says, "Yeah, you had to find a universe with a Rick who solved the problem." Got lucky. Yeah, we got lucky. It, yeah. But we can't do this too many times. You only like only a few more times. Right. Like, does that implies there's a finite number of you know such alternate universes that they can slip into? There's an infinite number of realities, Morty, and in a few dozen of those, I got lucky and turned everything back to normal. I just had to find one of those realities in which we also happen to both die around this time. Yeah, not only did they did that Rick solve the Cronenberg problem, but also they just happened to die right then, right so they afterwards, could just slip into that reality. <clears throat> Um, well, yeah. I think, and I think a, a real important part of the Rick and Morty universe is the the idea of nihilism. Mm -hmm. Like, there, Rick demonstrates very clearly that life is meaningless. Mm -hmm. Like, there, he's just haphazardly going around killing people and. Doing well, he those becomes things. a psychopath. Yeah, almost. You know, the implication I get is that he has some feelings. You know, he isn't he isn't maybe inherently a psychopath, but he is so overwhelmed by this notion that nothing matters because there's an infinite number of everything that he is he functionally becomes one he yeah. because he goes slaughtering his way through these multiple you know he like he destroyed an entire planet and just like gave up on it like you know once why didn't he find out how they solved the, the genetic mutation problem and then fix his own world he didn't care he just as long as he was able to slip into another, yeah, another and life. It didn't matter to him. When you know nothing matters, the universe is yours. And I've never met a universe that was into it. The universe is basically an animal. It grazes on the ordinary. Creates infinite idiots just to eat them. Not unlike your friend Timmy. Tommy. And I think that's all related to my favorite fan theory of why Rick is like he is and why the multiverse is like it is. Mm -hmm. uh, so the theory goes that, that his wife died, right? Mm -hmm. I think we could we know that his wife died. And uh, so he was trying, he was working on time travel theories. And in the process of working on these time travel theories, he created, he actually created the multiverse as we know it on the show. <laughs> now, but the thing is, he, he, he references a point, a, a constant point in, in the multiverse, and that's the death of his wife. Oh, and wow. that's why he, that's why, why hasn't he encountered his wife in any of the multiverses? Because yeah. that's the one constant in the in the multiverse, mm -hmm. and that's why he's so nihilistic. Because it's like, screw this. I mean, my family's replaceable. I'm just going to be a drunk genius and not yeah. care because he can't get his to his he can't get his wife back. Well, I think the drinking, so that's a great, the drinking great fun is, a, theory. is part of him dealing with how, mm -hmm. how screwed up things are. Now, do you guys realize that this universe is cosmic horror? It's an actual classification. This is like this oh. is like Lovecraft. It's Lovecraftian. Mm -hmm. Oh sure. They're, they're, a lot of the creatures are Lovecraftian. Oh totally. Aliens, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's a typical. monstrous reality. Like you know, there's very little normalcy mm -hmm. and very little sanity in the whole thing. Like you wouldn't want to go to any other universe because they're probably all screwed up in some way. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's always that one little thing. Like I remember this. this you know, they're running through universes, and there was like this whole series of things where like there was a pizza sitting on. 
uh, you know, couches were food and pizza was people and people yeah, yeah. were couches right. and like and all three of those things interchange <laughs> with and each that other. Goes, and that goes into the, the loose language that they use because they, they, they reference universes, timelines, dimensions, things like that. So it's all kind mm. of mushed together because so there, there's a parallel universes where there's different versions of Rick's and, Rick's and everything. But then there's also the dimensions, I'll call them, where things are completely upside down, like toilet people, yeah. liter, you know, things like that. Well, okay, so this is one of the premises of the show that I actually logically disagree with. Okay. Because and Rick says multiple times that there's an infinite number of universes, therefore there's a universe where anything is happening, right? No matter what you can imagine, there's a universe where that's happening right, because right. there's an infinite number of universes. But that's not true. That's not literally true. Like, there's a universe where there's sentient corn, you know, where, the, where people are couches and couches are pizza or whatever. Yeah. Um, no matter how, how ridiculous it is, there's a universe out there somewhere that has that right. those characteristics. But that that is a that's flawed logic, right? And I don't get I'm not that the writers care that much yeah, about this, yeah. but just just for the record. So, if like for example, you can have an infinite series of even numbers, right? Right. Yeah. There's no odd numbers in that infinite series. So not all infinite series contain every element right contain everything yeah you can have sense. an infinite series that ha also has an infinite number of things that aren't included in that series sure so you can have an infinite right. number of universes that don't include sentient corn yeah right yeah, but i think the, the premise of the show is that it's all out there it, anything yeah. is possible i mean it's, it's a perfect thing for this kind of show because yeah. they the writers are just they can literally do anything that they want there's no mm. nothing is on rails which and makes, that's the genius behind this. Is the, the story possibilities are literally endless. But the nihilist aspect of the of even the way that they write it is brilliant mm -hmm. because it, it lets them do whatever they want, and and any there is nothing sacred, right? It follows nihilism like all the way. Like well, nothing, Rick, that's the way Rick operates. Yeah. But he's surrounded by people who don't who aren't with him there, and yeah. so they're like constantly challenging him on his amorality. And he always has brilliant responses. I appreciate it, Morty. I know you were sucking the Kool-Aid out of the Vindicator's dick, so that's why popular people are f***ing dumb. And why your pretentious, poorly written, high-budget friends back there can eat a double-decker shit sandwich. Yeah. You know? and Or he, he manages to show... Like, he'll say something that seems completely psychopathic and cynical, and then Morty will challenge him on it. And then it turns out that Rick was right. You know, he was like... <laughs> his cynicism is almost always validated. You know, by the end, yeah. by the end of the show. Yeah, yeah, you win, Jerry. You win. No amount of genius can stop your dumb, mediocre, vacuous roots from digging into everything and everyone around you and draining them of any ability to fend you off. Well, it couldn't have been easy for you to say that. I appreciate it. And so you know, it's almost like we're being encouraged to become cynical along. With oh, absolutely, Rick. yeah. I got no problem with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there is something <laughs> disturbing about the show. You know, when I watch, I have a very like. You know, I'm I'm pretty much a nihilist in real, yeah. you know, my in reality because I, ultimately I see things as being meaningless, even though we have to bring meaning to our own lives. Exactly. But you know, when I watch the show, it's moderately fu it's funny, but it's moderately depressing because mm -hmm. in the end, I'm just like, oh my god, like they're just killing people, yeah. like everything. The one the episode where they kill themselves. You know, they show up and, and, and or no, they, they did an experiment and Rick and Morty it blew up. Yeah, that's a Rick potion number right. nine. And yeah. then they showed up and replaced themselves and they end burying themselves in the backyard. That was brutal. I mean, yeah. it, it's awesome, but it's so epically morbid. You know, like it's the very whole, morbid. Yeah. The whole show is very morbid. But that's that's that that is its unique charm. No other show hits that level of morbidity right. and, and makes it that funny. But it all ties back to the infinite number of universes. Yeah. Right. That that's why Rick is as cynical and morbid as he is. Nothing matters. I mean he says everything's very, very replaceable. Clear. Nothing matters. Don't worry about it. You got and, and, you know, they, they do make a running joke of it, like, you know, even in the, this is not in any episode, but in the intro to one of the seasons where he's like, there are prepackaged Mortys, yeah. you know, like they're literally replaceable. Or, like action figures, yeah. Yeah, or the, um, the, the, uh, the Ricks, you know, the organization give him like a coupon for a free Morty replacement, you know, <laughs> in, in case yeah. Morty dies and he takes it, yeah. you know. Uh, so even like even though he, he kind of has feelings for Morty, he also they imply that Morty is replaceable. Well, yeah, too. because that's that is Rick's theme. Like yeah. Rick, Rick knows that no matter what, like if if the Morty he happens to be with today dies, he'll can go pick up another one. Yeah, and it, is that a realistic uh, implication of there being infinite universes? Like if there if we discovered, you know, if we get our portal gun right, then we can go to any universe. Would we lose all sense of meaning because we, we could? Um, if, I mean, if things are quickly replaceable, anything is essentially mm -hmm. almost immediately replaceable. Sure, that devalues yeah. it. Sure, it, it does. would have a massive 
emotional implication. You mm-hmm. know, it, it's a, you know, it's it's just an absurd thing to think about because it's never going to you know. It, yeah, but that gets, but that's a, the core theme of the movie. Again, yeah. the the most dramatic manifestation of that is Rick Potion number nine. He yeah. destroys an entire planet. Like, His planet. Oh, the the pri- yeah. they're, where they're from where they're from yeah, yeah was, you, there's another one so that's that's all that matters yeah, yeah. well uh, there's a minor difference there was some, like you know it wasn't exactly the same mm-hmm. there were some minor differences um, yeah and I, I think this show is about going for their ride we're mm-hmm. just watching the, the, them bumble through all of this and I would love it if they if something happened you know a little bit yeah, I, yeah. not that I need you know this particular show to have meaning but it would be it would be cool like you said about his wife or something it would be cool to have some type of finish to it mm-hmm. you know maybe Rick finds does find her eventually you know what I mean and kind of like that yeah. would be the end of the show that would be really cool great premise for for this kind of show again I think the the uh, what I love about the show is that it's so well written you know the oh god the, the episode I thought that was sort of the tightest it was the Pickle Rick episode, oh. yeah. just um, absolutely amazing. But um, and not all episodes Pickle revolve Rick. yeah revolve around the the multiverse, but that that is such a driving aspect of Rick's character, which of course drives the whole series. And if you're if you're a sci-fi geek like we are, you have to watch this. I mean, this is one of the, it's one of the best sci-fi shows, animated shows on TV. I remember my daughter showed this to me years ago. She's like, Dad, you're gonna like this show. I watched three episodes and I said, "This is the best show on TV." Yeah. <laughs> best show on TV. If, if you are a geek about this stuff, you will absolutely be nuts. If you're, if you're one of the five people on the planet who hasn't seen it, you got to check this out. It's an amazing show. So many, it's so, so many good. in jokes, references. Oh, totally. Fiction. Yeah. Oh, if you're God. a science fiction fan, like Oof. this show is is meant for us. But just watch an episode that you've already seen, and don't watch Rick and Morty. Just look at the background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's riddled with like unbelievably funny jokes and yeah. weird stuff going on, and just cool things to look at. And and you know, every once in a while, I see something. I'm like, that's a really cool sci-fi idea they have in that just in that just episode. just littering the background. Right. Yeah. yeah it's just filled with it. All right. Um, well, wait. Okay. I'm gonna edit this in. Okay. Bob, what's your favorite episode? Favorite episode? Yeah. Or moment in the show? Do you have an episode or moment in the show? Like, I mean, Pickle Rick is up there when he created that that yeah. laser with with double A batteries that shot through three people's heads. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but you can't—they're like my babies. You, how can I pick a favorite? There's a yeah. handful that are just beyond epic. Yeah, I mean, I, that's that's also my favorite episode. But actually, the scene in that episode that I love the most is at the end when he's sitting in the in the therapist's office and she completely deconstructs him and yes. and his the relationships. Uh, you know, in a way that was very believable, and it, ma- it makes you th- insightful. You know, that, that kind of a thoughtful, you know, ending to an episode, which was a fun romp yeah. from beginning to end. You know, just puts it in a different level. Yeah, puts it in a different level. I like. How about you? I love the screaming sun. Just that <laughs> that that yeah. one second joke to me is absolutely hysterical because yeah. it's a nightmare planet, nightmare reality to live yeah. on. What was it? How long does the day? Like last? a forty-four hour day. Yeah, where the sun is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> that's, just, that's very Monty Python. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. absolutely. And I also love, um, like, the, remember the episode where Rick puts, they're at the video game yeah, yeah, shop, yeah. and he puts the helmet on. The Roy. 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 Yeah, and then he plays through the whole thing, and then he's so disoriented that he thinks he's Roy. And then Rick does it, and Rick, like, does so well in the video game that all the other nerds come over, like, look, he's like... <laughs> he's off the grid. He's <laughs> off the grid. He took him <laughs> off the grid, and they're all, like, super into it. Like, that is, like, a horrific thing to put somebody through and it's his grandson yeah. which like here a 55 year ex- you know, yeah. video game yeah, yeah in like two minutes you know what I mean and like yeah. I like how Rick was watching him play the game he's like oh the carpet store like he went back to the carpet store <laughs> 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 all right so please do uh, like this episode and go check us out at alphaquadrant6.com and also don't forget to subscribe and click the bell we'll see you soon guys <laughs>